Um, I just put together a presentation to just kind of guide our conversation today. Um, obviously, what I shared previously about what New Day does and in the video gave a, a little bit of a highlight, but I will also um, dig a little bit more and give some specifics about what we're seeing and the impact that we are seeing that the Lord is allowing us to have within our community and helping to accomplish the mission at New Day. And it's really just um, quite an honor to be there and to be a part of this ministry um, and stand for life in, in the world today. So when um, Aaron and I talked about what it might look like to do an expanded um, presentation for you guys, it was really focused on you know, breaking down biblically, how does the Lord view the topic of, you know, pro-life, pro-abundant life is how we look at it, but the world and, you know, often without churches who are willing to take a strong stance on it and have that conversation, it can be very easy to go along with what their world says. So, you know, looking at what does the, what does God's word say versus what is the world saying in regards to this topic of life? And going a little bit deeper into some of the common, you know, one or two things that you might hear, how to respond to those things, and then making sure that you obviously are aware and equipping you as the body of Christ to have the information needed so that if you're in a situation or a circumstance where you are encountering somebody who is in need of services that New Day provides, that you'll be able to understand and be able to speak to them about that. So that's all about uh, what we want to do to help build up and um, equip all of you to be able to do that, to help us to save lives, make abortion unthinkable, and to build strong families. So it might be hard to see this slide, but I wanted to put this up here because this is very alarming in the sense of putting it into context, the topic of abortion and how prevalent abortion actually is when we consider life inside of the womb to be life and life lost is then death. And when we put that information from what the CDC reports on the cause of death, they don't report it in this way. They report abortions over here and they report all of the top 10 reasons for the causes of death. But when you put them together, you can see that abortion is actually the number two leading cause of death in the United States annually, according to information from 2021. So there are over 600, 600,000 deaths occurring every year in the United States. Since Roe v. Wade has been overturned, there's been over 63, almost 65 million lives that have been lost to abortion. So it's a very real and prevalent thing that is occurring. You may be aware of, you know, two years ago, Roe v. Wade was overturned in Wisconsin, and we have a law in place that is then um, is outlawing and making abortion um, outlawed, however, or illegal. However, um, there was some decisions that were made by um, Dane County Supreme Court, and they are resuming and performing abortions in Wisconsin. So it is something that's um, happening again, and um, we are facing that. Women going to Madison, or women going to Milwaukee, or going across the border. So we want to connect with women and make sure that they know that we're here, uh, those that are searching for answers, and um, you know, it's really something that we're trying to prevent and, and truly save lives. So I have a little uh, clip in this video that I thought was really good to start to tee up you know, these, the different ways that the world looks at life and children and family and the way that the, the Lord does. And so I think that this was a really good way of doing that. So I'm going to go ahead and play this. Hopefully you can hear me. It says, having the baby is a choice. I knew you before I knit you in your mother's womb. The world says children are a burden. The fruit of the womb is his reward. The world says times are too crazy to be having children. God says, be fruitful and multiply. He says, your life will end if you have children. Children are God's heritage. Blessed is the man or woman. Childbirth is scary, yet she will be saved through childbearing. The world says, a career is more fulfilling. God says, every good and perfect gift is from above. More babies. Make more babies. So we are definitely in the business of making more babies. I 
really, truly, I'm so um, blessed to be able to, to do this work and how God, I can see how he's redeemed me, how he's used every part of my life and my experience professionally to put me into this position. And I definitely am humbled every day and feeling grateful to be able to do to his work. Um, and it's really amazing. But I have to say that, you know, I've really been walking with the Lord for the last 12 years. And prior to joining New Day, I would say that even in my own church, pro-life was not a topic that we were talking about. It wasn't something that as we, you know, talk about what God stands for and, um, Obviously, we want to continue to speak about Jesus and the church for sure, but to have an understanding that this is even something that we should focus on as Christians. So I walked into this position having um, my commitment to the Lord to do it, but not being somebody who is necessarily in the movement. So I've been coming up to speed and trying to figure it out and, and just listening and yielding to the Lord and how he's been directing. And it's been amazing because we continue to point back to him that it's really his ministry, his work. And as I mentioned, we are a Christian organization, and we've um, fully uh, declared that this year as we shifted our mission statement, actually, to say that um, everybody that volunteers and is committed there is a Christian, and we have those statements of faith, but our actual mission statement, we changed it and said that we are a Christian organization. And it's our heart that we are continuing to pray in every opportunity as we encounter women, maybe in that one-time appointment or as she comes back and gets the education that we have the opportunity to provide to her and really disciple that we're looking for every opportunity where we can point her back to Jesus. So that's our heart. Our verse for this year, which you'll see in a little while, is really, um, it's from Ephesians 3.20 and it's, it's through his power working in us that he will do exceedingly abundantly more than we can think or imagine. And we are seeing it happen, and it's awesome. Um, so I'm just going to kind of walk through a few things. You know, as we already know, um, the way that the world talks about um, children and un the unborn life is that the, the embryo isn't really human. It's not even really a life. It's just a clump of cells. It's not a big deal. Um, and we know that that's not true. There's Bible verses that we can point to that will help us to support that, which I'll talk about. But it's also, um, you know, we have science, and the world even has science to back these things up. So I wanted to just talk about, you know, things of how to communicate, you know, your views on pro-life um, as it relates to some of the common arguments. So, you know, hearing people say that it's just a clump of cells, it's not a human life, um, and the embryo uh, really is something that we can just brush off. Um, science is clear that this life is biologically alive. There are three things that are required. So it needs to grow through cellular reproduction. There's um, metabolizing food into energy so that the baby is doing that. And it's reacting to stimuli. Additionally, the embryo, it has a completely different DNA than the mother. And it's a unique and distinct life inside of the womb. So it is a human life. It is growing. It is thriving. It is being fed. And it is not the mother's life. It is that baby's life. And so it's a totally separate life that we need to look at and value uniquely. The other common um, argument that I'm going to touch on, and these are the only two, this isn't the whole presentation focus on this. It's more about what God's word says about it and helping us to ground it in. But I think it's good for us to just keep these things in mind. But my body, my choice. I think you saw in that little video, oh, my career is more important. This is going to get in my way. All the reasons why women who aren't planning to have a child can feasibly think about how this is not something that could be um, an option or all of the things that will help her to form a, a reason why not to have this baby. Um, and so when we look at uh, the argument of my body, my choice, um, it's, it's something that we want to talk about specifically in the terms of arguing um, that it's something that happens within a woman's body, but it doesn't matter whether the fetus is a person because he within the woman's body, and she has total control over her, her body, so she has the right to decide whatever happens. What we are saying here is that, you know, pro-choice, pro-life, 
pro, um, pro-choice, pro-life, as a Christian, we really have to be very firm in a pro-life view. And the woman, any pro-choice person, you would ask, 72%, which is the majority, would say that having a abortion at a later stage would not be okay. So why would having an abortion at an earlier stage and having autonomy over that life inside of her be okay? And so therefore that argument really doesn't stand and it's equal throughout the entire length of the pregnancy. And so um, that's something that can kind of argue that point. As I mentioned, we're gonna kind of shift into the focus of digging into the word and what does God's word say about life specifically. So, you know, four main categories really, as I mentioned, that we wanna focus on that Jesus is the creator and the perfecter of life. And there's scripture that for all of these points that we can, as Christians, know and understand that to be true. That we are his masterpiece, that we are made for God's works and his, his worship back to him and that we're called to fulfill the great commitments and the great commission. And so how we look at um, kind of arguing as a Christian really goes against those two things and we'll walk through that and hopefully make sense. So Jesus is the creator and the perfecter of life. I just want to reference um, these two verses here, John 1, 1 through 4. It says, the word became flesh and in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. John 1, 14. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. So God and Jesus... He is the perfecter of life. He is the creator. We can see through the examples of his life that at all stages, uh, which we'll talk about, but he embodied life and that we can see how precious and, and perfect it is in God's image. So life is precious and that we are his masterpiece. Psalm 103 Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and, he, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Genesis 1.27. So God created mankind in his Im- own image, and in the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. In Psalm 139, 13 through 16, For you have created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. So we can see from these verses how precious life is at all stages. Before, before you know, eyes ever before his eyes ever saw the unformed body and all the days of a person's life are created and planned by our creator. And so this is, these are beautiful verses that we as Christians can go to to have assurance, in obviously, um, that God stands for life and that we as Christians need to be firm in standing in the truth. So we are made for good works and worship through our life. Um, I have this song, I don't know why it's coming in my, in my mind, but let our life song sing to you. That is just coming to my mind and actually, it was so amazing that great is our Lord. You know, you give life, you are love, um, you bring light to the darkness, we've talked about that. And so I think the things that we worship and we sing to the Lord are from his word and we are so blessed to be able to see how he can bring that together but for us to settle it and to be able to share that truth with anybody who would be questioning, you know, oh, this is just um, not really a life or this is not a big deal, you know, that you know where to go and how to communicate that to um, a woman, but it says in Psalm 96 or 95.6, come let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. 
Psalm 119, 73 says, Your hands made me and formed me. Give me understanding to learn your commands. Jeremiah 1, 4 through 5, the word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. And Ephesians 2, 10, for we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So to me, th these things kind of build on each other. So it's clear that um, we bow to the Lord. He is our maker. We learn his commands and even before we were um, formed in the womb, he appointed us to be a prophet of nations. He's called us and given us works. And he has prepared those works in advance for us to do. And so we have divine purpose here on earth. And, and the world just needs to understand that. We have this truth that we need to go out and be ambassadors like Pastor John, or John said. I just thought that was amazing. Uh, it continues on to in James 2, 14, 17 through 18. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? In the same way, faith by itself, it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds. I will show you my faith without by my deeds. In Isaiah 45, 9 through 10. Woe to those who quarrel with the maker, those who are nothing but pot sherds among the pot sherds on the ground. Does the clay say to the potter, what are you making? Does your work say the potter has no hands? Woe to the one who says to the mother, what have you begotten? Or to the mother, what have you brought to birth? And this to me kind of starts to build up. We are all called to be ambassadors. And what if we do nothing? Well, we have to really answer to the Lord for, and how can we make sure that we understand and we're firm in our, uh, our position and our belief as Christians and who, what God says about life and the preciousness of life and to be ready and prepared to do something about what, you, what we profess to believe, um, which is what God's word says. And so I'm glad that you guys are all here. I think that that's you taking a step and saying, I want more information. I want to be used. I want to know and, and have information to be able to help in whatever situation I can. And it's clear that, you know, woe to you who, who don't. And, and I think that that's a lot of churches um, not calling anybody out specifically. But I think across America, it's gone silent. And I'm really grateful for what I'm seeing in Walworth County, a shift and talking about these things, not in the sense of being condemning or, or picking sides. It's not about that, but it's really about standing for truth and arming Christians to be bold and courageous in that. So I hope that this is starting to, you know, frame up for you and help commission some of these um, things for you. And I'm glad that you're here. And finally, Job 10, 8 through 12, it says, Your hand shaped me and made me. Will you now turn and destroy me? Remember that you molded me like clay. Will you now turn me into dust again? Did you not pour me out like milk, curdle me like cheese, cloth, clothe me with skin and flesh, and knit me together with bones and sinews? You gave me life and showed me kindness, and now in your provision or providence washed over my spirit. So I think it's just all the more the Lord's call and impressing on the um, urgency to, to stand for our faith. Um, so I started mentioning this when I was up front, but really our stance at New Day um, is not just about life. It's about pro-abundant life. And we have a view that, you know, Jesus came, he came that we may have life and have it abundantly. John talked about, and I was a little worried at first because I thought, well, my walk with the Lord hasn't really been that easy. So I know that those things are available to me, but I've been wrestling and working out that sanctification process as we know that Paul talked about in that wrestling. And so I was glad that he followed it up with that because I was like, okay, I'm, I'm okay. Um, and, but we, through that, through that, we can tell women, we can say, no, truly, this, I understand. I, I know where you've been. I can help you. You can stand in the gap, and, and we can have 
um, faith for them. And so that's really an honor to be able to stand uh, for women and families. And um, we focus in on these two pillars uh, for a pro-abundant life. So God has called us to the Great Commandment, and he's called us to the Great Commission. So there, this is fundamental as it relates to our views about what it means to be a Christian and how truly having a pro-choice view doesn't go in, in line with it. And so I'll, I'll walk through that a little bit with you. So Matthew twenty two thirty six through 40, it says, Teacher, you know this verse. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. This is your first and greatest command. And the second is like it, to love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. So we're going to dig a little bit into this, and I think end at the end of understanding how uh, the Great Commandment really and the Great Commission are both um, fulfilled or not fulfilled in the view of abortion. So we'll understand when did Jesus' human life begin and how should uh, this fact affect a Christian's view on abortion? How does Mary's unplanned pregnancy tell Christians about the abortion decision or what does Mary's unplanned pregnancy tell Christians about the abortion decision? And how should the uncertainty about when life begins lead a Christian to view the abortion decision? And finally, does support for abortion fulfill the Great Commandment and the Great Commission? So we know that um, Jesus' life, he's a human. He was conceived by the Virgin, by the Virgin Mary, by the Holy Spirit. And we know that scripture makes it really clear that like when life began, and we can actually point specifically to when um, Elizabeth, her life inside of the womb at those early stages of pregnancy actually responded to Jesus. When they came together, it talks about she was probably six months of age, and when Mary had approached her, she was probably just a few weeks pregnant. And that life in her womb, Jesus, then responded um, to John's life, responded to Jesus. So we, with that, that Jesus's life was from the point of conception, that's clear. As Christians, we can see that in scripture and we can see that all throughout pregnancy, that human life has value. Mary's unplanned pregnancy tells us about a response to her decision about her unplanned pregnancy, gives us um, inspiration, courage, and how to respond. So when a woman is facing an unplanned pregnancy, she's typically telling somebody that she's really close to or someone who can sympathize with her decision. So Mary went to Elizabeth and she shared that news with her. Um, but the angel, you know, gave Mary another piece of information that was probably not known to anybody else, that her cousin was pregnant as well. And so scripture then it tells us that Elizabeth conceived and she hid her pregnancy for five months. Um, and it really is showing at this point that nothing is impossible with God and that that is what we need to continually remember and keep in mind and not to fall into the lie that of what we see. We focus on the things that are not seen and the impossible that can be made possible by God. Uh, so this significant... Um, this is significant to the life issue because scripture tells us that both late-term abortion and early-term abortion or ending a life at any point is wrong and that um, further affirming that the presence of life inside of the womb in both the earliest and the latest stages of pregnancy are relevant. So the uncertainty about when life begins should further tell us that we should support life, not just vulnerable life that's precious, um, you know, at the end of pregnancy when it's evident that there is a baby, but at the early stages too, because that life from the point of conception, like Jesus, is even more valuable and more vulnerable and should be protected even more in that early stage. And so that's really important for us about any uncertainty that we would have about when we should be promoting or protecting life at any point in, in the stage of pregnancy. There's a lot here. I'm just going to summarize it. You don't have to read it. But basically, the, the great command is really broken down into three loves. Love for God, love for your neighbor, and love for self. 
The word neighbor in this verse is actually Greek for near one or near fellow. So loving your neighbor as yourself means loving your near one as you love yourself. And for a woman, the, the word agape is the word that is used for love in this verse. And it's sacrificial. It's the same as used in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have eternal life. And also John 15, 13, that greater love has no one than this, that he lays his life down for his friends. So per the great commandment, we are supposed to be a, have a sacrificial love for our neighbors, our near ones. And so how does this relate to life? This relates to what? to life in terms of a pregnant woman who her nearest of one, should her life should be sacrificed, not the life of the child to be sacrificed for the, the mother. And so as Christians, then we have to ask ourselves the second question, how would aborting your near one, this baby in the womb, an act of sacrificial love for your neighbor be fulfilling the great commandment? I know everybody in here has a pro-life view, I'm going to assume that, but these are things that as you might encounter conversation with other Christians about how or why we can't contradict our views and biblically how these verses and, and how this really comes together is, is what God is calling us to in that great commandment. So understanding um, that there are resources available. New Day Women's Clinic is a resource. This is an opportunity to educate all of you um, and what it looks like in terms of supporting New Day Women's Clinic. What do we actually do? How do we um, support pro-life or pro-abundant life and help to pour into the lives that we're, of the people that we're serving? So again, kind of focusing now on the right side um, with the Great Commission and us fulfilling the Great Commission from Matthew 28, 19 through 20. And so to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and in the Son and the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So we've all been called to the Great Commission. We've all been called to share that news with, with um everybody in our life to be an ambassador, to be a reflection of Christ within us. And at New Day, we're blessed to be able to do that as well. So our vision is that with God's hand guiding us, we're able to provide a full spectrum of pre and post birth services and outreach to our surrounding communities so that abortion becomes unthinkable, pregnant mothers are supported and encouraged, and families impacted by abortion can find hope and healing in the promises of God. So it, that is what we do, and that is how we're fulfilling the call of, and how we're fulfilling the call, the call to the Great Commission is what we'll kind of shift to. So we talked about um, our mission at the Christian organization. We nurture and educate expectant women, and we help those suffering from the aftermath of abortion. We do that by empowering women, enriching their lives, and equipping them. Um, empowering them to be brave, and have confidence and building the confidence up in them when the world is telling them that they can't do it. We tell them that they can. To enrich them, to provide compassion, care in the education. We, we sit and provide education through video curriculum and a one-on-one -on -one mentoring to really disciple a woman in that situation who's not sure what it looks like to be a parent. Her experience was really not that great. She doesn't have anybody around her that she can look to the helper, but we're willing to, through volunteers and through New Day, come alongside of her and partner with her um, and walk that through. And then, you know, continuing to help provide services that are equipping them to have long-standing change, to live and walk out, um, and not just focus in on the time that we might see her, but we're also focusing on continuing to connect her with resources in the community that will carry on the work that we're doing, um, which is exciting as well. So I'll talk a little bit about that. But, um, you know, support and education, the spiritual guidance is really important. Uh, the medical services and the community engagement that we, that we do, enabling them to choose life for their unborn baby and developing the ministry functions that will come alongside and walk through those life struggles uh, is our purpose. I 
talked on that. But specifically, um, we provide free pregnancy testing and ultrasounds, STI testing and treatment. So that's sexually transmitted infections. Um, and we, that's always a question for people. So I explain it to be the way that we are able to enter into a conversation with someone who is engaging in activity that will likely lead to um, a non-planned pregnancy. In addition, a woman who um, has had an STI is more at risk of having an abortion, and we know that. And so we want them to turn and come to us as being a resource that they've connected with. Parenting education, this is a beautiful thing that we get to you know, provide education about the growth and the development of the baby and help them understand what it looks like to, to parent and discipline and different stages of ages of babies and the life, you know, the life of, of that developing child, uh, but also interactions and building healthy relationships between that parent and child and encouraging that mother and that father that they can have um, the option, or they can have the ability to influence uh, this life. We partner with a lot of different agencies. So we have a full case management program. Last year, we hired a case manager because we realized that the complexity of what a woman or a family is facing when they're coming to us and they're considering ending the life of their unborn baby, it's, it's not because they're trying to do something malicious. It's because they don't see any way over or beyond the things that are in front of them. And so we have a dedicated resource and connect them to resources within the community that we can deal with housing, we can deal with jobs, we can deal with um, all of the material needs that she would have for the baby. We can provide those things, but um, all the services through Health and Human Services, we partner a lot. I know you guys are familiar with Safe Families. That's a beautiful partnership that we have as ways of, as we've walked through for weeks, months with a woman in her pregnancy and then beyond, at some point, our services are no longer relevant, but we don't just see that woman not have anybody come alongside of her. And so this is in that situation where we know that it's not a good support system. We know that we don't want to see that person you know, crash and burn, we can give a referral to say families and they can then have a family friend come alongside and a coach. In addition, we can provide education to the family coaches or the individuals that are partnering with folks at Safe Families if they have a particular need as well. And so we've kind of had this exchange and that's just one example of one of the agencies that we partner with, but it's, we love that part. Um, abortion pill reversal. So I want to specifically talk about what this is because if people are like, what, you're doing abortions? And the word there, and it confuses people, but it's, we're an abortion pill reversal provider. So abortions are not happening surgically. The majority, over 60% of, of abortions in the United States are occurring through a chemical pill, taking a two-pill regimen. So if a woman takes the first pill and she says, I regret taking that. Think of somebody who's, who's taken the step to take a bunch of pills and tried to commit suicide and they have that moment of like, what did I do? Thankfully, there is a, there is a um, reversal treatment and we are a provider of that service that can reverse the effects of the first pill. So we have actually had our first successful baby delivered this year, praise the Lord. Um, but there's been over 4,500 babies and lives saved across the United States through this um, treatment. And so really what it is, it's the first pill um, cuts off progesterone and we boost progesterone. So that's what we're giving her, a two-week regimen to boost progesterone. So if we can catch it within the first 24 hours up to 72, it's a little bit um, less effective at those later, eight, later hours. But if we can catch it early, we have, you know, a 60 to 70 percent chance of effectiveness to save that life. And so we had our first one and then we had the, our second that we administered. And we don't know yet if she if that baby was saved or not, but we're just continuing to pray for it. Um, so that is a real miraculous thing that we've been able to observe how God has saved that life from the grave. And that baby is perfect. 
that testimony of that mom is like there's she absolutely perfect. So that's really amazing. Um, the post-abortive healing, that is really critical. Nothing good comes from abortion. Whether the world wants to tell us that it does, nothing good comes from abortion. And a woman or a man who have experienced that have years of regret, years of shame. It's like that, that has changed their identity entirely. We want to walk through and administer the healing and the truth and the power of Christ and his resurrection to redeem that through his forgiveness that he offers. And so we did our first class this year uh, in-house. We previously referred that out and we have been able to bring that in-house now. We have our second class starting on July 11th. We want to make sure that people know if, if you or someone that you know is wrestling with that um, decision and hasn't gone through a healing program that will you know, they can come to us and they can go through that co cohort. It's a nine-week course uh, that we're providing. Uh, we have miscarriage support. So this is something as well. I think we often diminish loss of life at those early stages through miscarriage. And we don't allow a woman to grieve. We oftentimes, they're not even telling people that they're pregnant. So they don't know and they're hurting and so this is a, a ministry that we care, to care deeply about. We want to partner with churches to come alongside um, specific needs for that grieving process. Specific classes for fatherhood, that's really important. You fathers in the room know you have a really big job. And that, um, we want to, we have dedicated uh, volunteers that will walk through one-on-one -on -one mentoring, men-to-men on that fatherhood curriculum. Uh, and then we have group classes, like I talked about, and those community referrals. So we do quite a lot, um, but it's all focused in on, you know, building up that individual, loving on that woman. Because if we can love on her, we can help address her needs, then she can help care for the life of her child and her family and go on to have a strong family unit um, for her and affect generations to come. So I just have a few stories of um, kind of our impact and kind of point to different um, families here, maybe just two or three of them. But um, this family has the twins that they came to us. They found out they were having these twins. And so they, that was always, that's always exciting for us. Maybe not the parents, but, <laughs> but for us, it's always exciting when there's two babies in there. But um, we were able to come alongside of this family through the mentoring. He, um, Frankie, he's actually the one that came and asking for diapers for their toddler. And so then they found out they were pregnant. Then they came for the pregnancy test. Then they came for the ultrasound. Then they came for the mentoring. And we walked through that whole pregnancy with them. She had complications with the babies. We were able to pray and then see prayers answered with the health of that baby. Um, and Frankie, actually, we were able to lead him to Christ. And he accepted the Lord as his Savior. So this, this was an awesome story for us to just see, like, Truly, lives changed. Um, we're still working on Janelle, but she sees it. Um, this is our case manager, Jen, and this is a couple that um, she walked through with them as well, and their testimony is just really powerful, specifically from, I think, the men, the dad side of things. He felt like he was equipped to be the dad that God's calling him to be. And so that was amazing um, journey with them and to, and to watch them have their first baby and they still come back and visit us when they're up in this area. And this is Jasmine. She's holding in her hand a um, maternity camisole. And I didn't share this. Um, she was the first client I ever met with. And I was um, actually asking her if she would be a part of a video and to be a model and... While I was talking to her, I said, you know, are you going to breastfeed? And she said, yeah. And I said, okay, well, you know, do you need a, a nursing bra? My previous job, I worked for 14 years for Medela, which is a breast pump company, and they have products that support women to breastfeed their babies. And that camisole is one of my products that I was a product manager for. So now I'm sitting in front of a woman who had has been at our clinic and she's got a big belly bump and she starts, it was the one thing that she just broke and started crying. She said, 
I just, I usually use that band that they give you for the monitor. It's like not a bra. And she said, I just, I haven't been able to buy myself one. Because she does everything for her child. She does nothing for herself. And that we were able to stand there. I'm crying, she's crying. I'm like, I'm gonna get you all the nursing bras that I can. And so this was a cute picture of her, you know, holding that. And her baby is a year and a half and just porky and so super cute. And she's doing great. She's an amazing, inspiring mother. Um, and it's just been a blessing to walk alongside of her as well. So these are real families, real babies, real lives, you know, that are being touched and impacted. And it's just an honor. Obviously, you're all getting involved. You're partnering with us as a church. You're helping to learn more about the services that we provide, how you might be being called to get involved, not just with the baby bottle boomerang, but in other ways, you know, we have mentor or we have volunteer opportunities. Um, and so if that's something that you're feeling like you have capacity for and wanting to look for ways to volunteer, we have lots of different opportunities um, to partner with us in our ministry. So we are um, staffed by um, staff members and volunteers, and um, we're always looking for people to come alongside of us and help us uh, provide one-on-one -on -one mentoring and parenting education or helping us clean the facility or you know, go out and talk to organizations, help us with events, whatever your skill, whatever God's given you as your talent, we definitely um, can use it. This is information about the abortion healing um, class that I mentioned to you. So that is starting on, this is hard to read, 11th. Yes, and it's going to be held at Calvary Community Church. So we're partnering just for the location. Um, for that uh, to be accommodating there. I just wanted to open up. That's um, pretty much all that I have uh, to share. I can answer any questions that you guys might have. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Go ahead. To us, direct them to us. If you have people that you know are adamant and they have questions, you know, we love for people to come in and see, you know, the space, see what it is, and the environment that where we provide the services. Gina knows she volunteers with us, uh, and it's just yes, we are there to answer any questions, and it's it's not just a get her to a decision. Actually, that's a really good segue into the fact of the services that we provide obviously are medical, but then we have like a social services. We have two branches that we see our ministry as. And the, the medical is just one point in time. So if all we're doing is giving a pregnancy test or an ultrasound, like we failed. Because if she's not coming back for then the education and the ongoing support and opportunity for us to minister and mentor to her, that really is a missed opportunity. So the majority of our services are actually on the social services. It's about 60% of our appointments are social services. So we always look for opportunities as we're uh, going through an intake process, uh, questions about you know what risk factors might be there, ways that we can step in and help meet tangible needs that that woman or that family has and so that we can help her uh, to choose life. That's a great question. Other questions? Yes. Yes, I'm thankful that you are asking that clarifying question. That's actually data from two different reports. So the one report is, here's the risk or the cause of death and the numbers 
per the CDC for 2021. The other abortion number is the reported number of abortions. And so I put them together to see it side by side, the 600 plus thousand lives that are lost to abortion compared to heart disease, diabetes, and all these other things. Heart disease is the only other leading cause of death to abortion. very confidential, very private. We adhere to medical practice, HIPAA laws and requirements and everybody who is there, if you're there just for the day, if Aaron would have been there and we would have had a client, we probably would have had him sign a confidentiality agreement and so forth. So um, that's something that we really uphold as well. Yes, so I think it's nearing 53 to 58% of abortions are chemical abortions. So they are taking a pill, and that, that is um, the process of how they're having an abortion. It's not a surgical procedure of going to a clinic and getting those. And they can actually mail order them. That was what the decision was about the Supreme Court, and they didn't um, increase, you know, the... So, yeah, this is, the, this is the scary thing as well. Um, a woman is supposed to take those pills before 10 weeks, but she can order them online and she could be 10 weeks, get them in three and hold them for two and be 15 weeks and take them. There's no oversight. There's no ultrasound that's required. And that was the whole argument about the unsafe practice of administering these pills without medical oversight for a woman. And, and the, what's... What's occurring then um, with women and the process of, the horrifying process that actually they are faced with that nobody's really telling them what the reality is of what they're going to face at home, in private, by themselves. I cannot, yes. Any information that I've shared with you today can definitely go into your personal decision about what you do at the ballot, yes. Yes, yes. No, they're told that it, it's, um, they're told that, you know, light cramping, light bleeding, and that's not always the case. It can be very graphically present and, again, you know, way more bleeding and could lead to hemorrhaging and other complications that come into play with that. It, typically, um, they're told to just discard the baby through the, um, the facilities. And so a woman really could have the experience of seeing that. It's, it's not health care. It's not empowering. It's not helping a woman in that situation. And, and they, typically, what I've heard previously from a medical um, I'm confusing it, but a surgical abortion. You know, it was like eight to 10 years before a woman would really face that reality in her life and the effects of that in her own personal life. But this is a much different thing where it's not what she was told, not what she expected, and now it's this horrifi horrifying or hor horrific event that she's um, facing. And then now she's gonna have to tell somebody and or not tell anybody. So we are careful to, we will only do an ultrasound if a woman has a pregnancy test that says that she's pregnant. So we don't um, provide services for a woman who may be coming in to check and see if, you know, an abortion was effective. There are some centers that are feeling like that's an opportunity 
to minister to that need at that moment, but for right now, that's not something that we're doing. Um, it feels a little bit too close to helping to facilitate that. Uh, so we do not refer or recommend abortions, and in the um, education that we provide women that are coming to us about the options, and if you go to our website, you'll see your options is parenting, adoption, or abortion. Those are the three options. And if we're not providing information on our website and allowing them a safe place to feel like they can come in and have those conversations and really understand the risks associated with it, then who is? And so we do educate on the risks associated with an abortion and help her understand that type of abortion and then understand why she's seeking that abortion. And so facilitating and and having and engaging in that conversation is really important or we've cut ourselves out from having a conversation with somebody who doesn't hold our same views about pro-life because we're alienating her based on our, our own personal beliefs. She still is going to make the decision when she leaves our doors of what she's going to do, but we hope that we've given her the information that she needs to be empowered to make that decision for herself because she knows and understands and she understands the alternatives that are loving to herself and to her family and that we are there to help and support her. So I know I've gone over time. Thank you. Let's thank her a little more time. Uh, I'll, I'll get you out of here in just a second, but um, I, I guess a couple of reminders. We got the, the baby bottle boomerang. It's a very simple way that we can help. And uh, I know a lot of people took those and if you didn't get one yet, um, we got a great website, um, I was on it the other day, you can give online, right, I'm assuming, and, and information about volunteering. I didn't realize we had a volunteer here already, and so if that's something God is calling you to, you wanna just find out more information, you, got, you can do that. So we appreciate you very much coming here, and I wanna pray for you before we uh, are sent out here. Lord God, thank you so much uh, for this opportunity to hear from Gretel and, and the work that, uh, that she and New Day Women's Clinic is doing in this, in this county. And Lord, this is a serious, serious matter, serious issue, and it's become so political in so many regards. But Lord, we thank you for the reminder that, Lord, you're, you, you are pro-life. Lord, that we see this in your word. We see this in the way that you care for us and you call us. And Lord, you have called us to a, to a mission, to, to, to love you, to love others. Lord, to spread the, the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, help us to do that. Help, help New Day Women's Clinic to continue the work that they're doing. Lord, bless them, sustain them. Lord, bless, bless Gretel and sustain her as well in all of this. And, Lord, whether it's uh, New Day Women's Clinic or, or some of the other organizations, say Families Agape, we, we lift those up as well. And, Lord, just help us to be sensitive to how you might be calling each of us to, to be involved um, and these organizations that are doing your work, good work, Lord. So we thank you now. Bless each person now as we get ready to get sent out of here. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, guys. Thank you so much for staying. Thanks, Gretel.